Howdy readers, I'm Jason, this is Chapter and Verse, uh, and this is my video on Wit, uh, the film, uh, the HBO film directed by Mike Nichols um, and co-written by uh, Mike Nichols and Emma Thompson, uh, who also stars in the film. Um, as you know, we read the play uh, earlier uh, this month as part of my mortality project. Um, I will link the announcement video to that project uh, in the description box below. But before I say anything about the film, I wanted to uh, just share a little story uh, with you guys um, that deals with cancer and that deals with uh, Emma Thompson. And, um, and that story is this. Uh, so right near the end of my undergraduate career, um, my brother, uh, who was in college with me as well, uh, he was studying wildlife management at the time, uh, he fell ill, uh, developed uh, an anemia. And they were having a very difficult time figuring out what was going on with him. But he, his body had less than uh, half the blood that it should have had in it. When they figured this out, when they realized that there was something wrong with him, uh, he was seeing a doctor for another reason altogether. And the doctor noted how pale he was. I didn't notice how pale he had, had become because I saw him every day. Um, it was so gradual. And uh, But anyway, his bone marrow um, had stopped producing blood or something like this. I'm not exactly sure how it works. His spleen was involved, and he, um, the doctors determined that there was, there was some kind of cancer. There was, there was something something involving cancer was going on. Um, they were going to be starting him on chemotherapy, but before they did that, um, my mother, who was a nurse and uh, had been in contact with the Center for Disease Control along with um, my brother's doctor, um, figured out another possible treatment for what was going on with him, and so they went with that first. And it, uh, it ended up curing it, for a time anyway. Uh, it returned about nine years ago, something like this. And he ended up having to have surgery. And, but anyhow, so when he was sick originally, when he was in the hospital and, you know, was having um, all of these bone marrow biopsies, I mean an ungodly number of bone marrow biopsies, um, and they were trying to figure out what was going on with him, I wrote a letter to Emma Thompson. Uh, my brother was a huge, uh, is a huge fan of uh, Sense and Sensibility, right? Which she wrote the screenplay for, won the Oscar for writing the screenplay for. I just thought it would cheer him up uh, somehow if she could just send him a card or something like this. And so I wrote to her in care of her agent. Um, I don't even remember now how I tracked down um, that information or that address. But, um, but she wrote back in pretty short order. And she didn't just send him a card. Um, she sent him the soundtrack to the film um, autographed to him. She sent him a copy of her published journals from the making of the film autographed to him. And she also sent him a book that um, was about illness and that she thought would be helpful to him uh, at the time. The letter she wrote to him was so generous, it was so kind. Um, and all the stuff that she sent was just so absolutely kind. And, um, and so I crocheted her a scarf uh, in thanks and, um, and sent it to her. And, uh, and she sent me back this little note on her own personal uh, stationery. And um, with a really uh, nice note um, on the other side, uh, she said, Dear Jason, so many thanks for your lovely letter. I wish you such good luck and good fortune and good everything with Timberline, which was the screenplay I had written uh, at the time. Follow your heart and everyone will follow you. Love from Emma Thompson, in parentheses. And I bring this up because wit, wit is this movie, right? It's this play that is very much about um, the balance or sometimes the imbalance between intellect and between feeling, um, between judgment and grace, um, especially uh, as, as these things kind of come into play um, at end of life, right? Um, in the midst of illness. I hadn't thought about it in years. I hadn't thought about the exchange that I had with her or the gifts that she sent to my brother when he was sick. I hadn't thought about it in so long until I until I watched the film again uh, the other night, and then I just remembered her absolute 
utterly selfless kindness in the midst of what my brother was going through. And it made sense. It made more sense than ever that she starred in this film, that she co-wrote this film. Um, and it was made right around the time uh, my, brother was, my brother was ill. And it made the viewing experience of Wit um, this second time around so much more personal somehow, so much more powerful. Anyway, I just, I thought that that would be a good way to kind of introduce um, my very brief discussion of the movie. So one of the things, when you're looking at an adaptation of a play or an adaptation of a book, um, what you're looking at is, is whether or not uh, the filmmaker's decisions feel right, whether or not they work, um, because they don't always. And um, in this case, I'm not just talking about Mike Nichols as a director, but also Emma Thompson, because she co-wrote the film with Nichols. And one of the things that they did in the movie, which is maybe suggested on the page in the play, I could see some stage productions doing this, or some form of this. Um, but one of the things they, they did was in the scene where uh, we get her memory, uh, her Beatrix Potter memory, where her father explains to her the meaning of soporific. And she knows that that's when she wants to work with words uh, in her life. Um, as I read the play, I imagined it as, as just a little girl uh, brought on the stage, right? And, and almost like, like we have the sickly Vivian um, standing kind of off center left or something. And then, you know, in a spotlight or something, a little girl playing Vivian as a child um, with her dad having this conversation about uh, about Beatrix Potter and um, in the film they start out right with uh, with a little girl playing Vivian and it cuts way to the father and then it cuts back to Vivian uh, as a child but it's no longer a child playing her it's Emma Thompson bald in a hospital gown um, at that store essentially and I found that so powerful. Uh, that was the first moment watching the film this time around um, that just brought tears to my eyes, that choked me up. And I think why I found it so powerful uh, was because filming the scene in that way, it made that scene, that Beatrix Potter scene, um, a more kind of explicit front bookend uh, with the runaway bunny scene at the end of the film where we see her very much at the end of her life and very much reduced to infancy again. And, um, and I just thought that was just incredibly powerful, just incredibly powerful. It was absolutely the right choice to make to cut between a little girl playing the young Vivian and Emma Thompson, right, who um, is just ravaged by illness, playing her as a child, playing herself as a child. I just thought it was incredibly poignant uh, and just a really lovely way of kind of framing uh, her story. And speaking of the runaway bunny scene at the end of the film, so when I read the play, um, you know, a couple weeks back or whatever it was, uh, I don't know how I missed this or how I didn't notice it or think about it uh, so much, but at the end of the play, um, E.M., right, her mentor, Vivian's mentor, who comes back and sees her, and ends up reading her this this children's book. Before she leaves her, she quotes Shakespeare uh, from Hamlet, right? If I remember right, it's, uh, it's Horatio um, after Hamlet has died. Flights of angels uh, sing thee to thy rest, and um, and and for some reason I missed it on the page, and I didn't miss it at all in the film. I found it so powerful, in part because of E. M. S. earlier scorn for Shakespeare's feeling with a capital F. Right when she's like, you know, if you go in for this sort of thing, you might as well study Shakespeare, and um, and so there's this this dance right between intellect and feeling. So Dunn represents intellect, Shakespeare represents feeling. And um, and when she first gets into the room, she asks uh, Vivian, who's barely conscious, um, if she should recite some Dunn to her. Vivian shakes her head. She's vehement. She she wants none of that. She can't handle that. Um, but I think it's even more than, than her not being able to handle it. I think it's that at that moment, right, in the end of life, intellect doesn't really have a place anymore. That's the place, that's the time for sentiment and for feeling. And so Shakespeare's line uh, is somehow perfect, right? I mean, you can't imagine a better line 
spoken, a more apropos uh, line spoken in a moment like that than, um, than that line from Hamlet. So that's Witch, right? That's the that's the film. I think they did a magnificent job uh, adapting it for the screen. Uh, Mike Nichols there at the end of his life, boy, he had a hell of a good relationship with HBO um, and with Emma Thompson, right? There, there was this kind of collaborative thing going on between the company and these two artists. Um, he also did uh, Angels in America, Tony Kushner's Angels in America as an HBO miniseries in which Emma Thompson plays, I think, three parts, three different roles. But um, but anyway, if you watched the film, uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. And from here, we will look forward to uh, Behind the Sun, uh, the Walter Salas film uh, for next month. And then uh, 2666 by Roberto Bolaño, which will be um, doing double duty for me as, uh, as my mortality project reading for the month of March and as my mammoth. Um, and I'll make just a little brief video that'll go up in the morning, um, announcing it as my pick for the month. But, uh, but anyway, uh, thank you guys for joining along with me in this, uh, mortality project. Adios.